Hey everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. We have kind of a fun project that is going to be the beginning of a series, but I want to start off by telling you a story. One day I walked outside of my house and my neighbor ran over and he said, Dan, Dan, where have you been? And I told him I was in my office behind my house. And he said, well, I came to your door a bunch of times and you didn't answer. And I said, oh yeah, my doorbell doesn't reach back there. And he said, well, as techy as you are, I thought for sure your doorbell would ring even back in your office. And I thought to myself, you know what? I am ashamed to call myself a maker. And so I have one of the traditional wired doorbells. Now, I actually prefer wired doorbells because they just work. Um, as long as your transformer doesn't die, they're hardwired. There's no interference with your neighbor or anything like that. Uh, the one problem is my doorbell isn't smart. And so uh, I thought what we do is take a look at how a doorbell works. Uh, before we do anything, I want to caution you that the doorbell runs on AC. And this transformer runs on AC. And so this side of the transformer over here is 110 volts AC or 220 volts AC, mains AC, wherever you're at. Um, it is dangerous and this side is also AC but it is stepped down somewhere into the 10 to 30 volts range but we'll take a look at that. First of all let's just take a look at the doorbell circuit. I am going to power it up by putting 110 volts AC into this side of the transformer. Coming out this side is like I said somewhere in the range of 10 to 30 volts AC and it comes to this button. Now this particular one has a light on it. Um, this one does not, but if you look closely, you'll just see that it's just a couple of pieces of metal. And so literally all the button has to do is complete the circuit. When this circuit is complete, this transformer will energize an electromagnet in the doorbell. And it's just like the kind you used to make when you were a kid where you'd wrap a wire around a nail and uh, energize it and then it would pick up some paper clips and things like that. What happens is this electromagnet is energized and it's going to pull the little hammer to this little xylophone over on this side. And then as soon as the power goes away, it's going to be uh, released and it's going to swing back and just hit this one out of momentum. Uh, and that is how the ding dong works. And so you'll see we have and in fact, I'll get you way down there closer and you can get a better look. Now you'll notice that as I hold this thing, it's energized and it's hitting that bottom one and I'll let it go. And the fact that I release it, this little spring uh, stops it from bouncing around but allows it to get one last hit on the ding dong. Now if we were using the front and back door feature, then this one would just ding and this one would ding dong. And that's essentially what's going on inside your doorbell. Now, the question is, how could we make something like this smart? And uh, smart just kind of depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, we could do something like, we could put something on here to see when this thing vibrates and when it does, it could send out a message. We could use some kind of double pole switch it would have an Arduino or something connected to the second pole and we could detect the button press that way. Um, but we're gonna take a different approach. And the fact is on this part of the project, the only thing we care about is just letting us know it rang. Now this could be used for a lot of different things. We can send a notification to a phone. We could send a notification to a different building. Let's say as, as one person pointed out when I was talking about this project, uh, in fact, it was Infinity Makerspace located in South Africa, pointed out that this would be perfect if you had somebody in the house who's hearing impaired and you want a light to go off or a light to flash when the bell is pushed. Uh, there's all kinds of different things you could do with it. So I have an idea that's a little bit different and it kind of involves how the doorbell works. So let me grab a couple of meters. The first thing I'm going to do is show you that just on this side of the transformer, we are pulling, uh, so we're right at the top. Of, I thought we'd be pulling a little less than that. We are pulling uh, 20.6 volts and that is AC, uh, but essentially there's no current flowing. 
and we'll take a look at that. So we're gonna fire up the old, this is like 1980s uh, ammeter. And so the way this works, we're gonna clamp this around the wire and you're gonna see that basically 0.05 amps are flowing through this circuit when there's nothing going on. But if I push the doorbell, you'll see it spikes up to just under an amp. Now I think this transformer can actually put out something like 10 amps. But we definitely get a spike in current when that button is pushed. And that is how we are going to smartify this thing. So the way we're going to make this happen is with this little doohickey. And it is 79 cents on AliExpress. And for all practical purposes, it is about the same thing as this little doohickey. It measures current by passing the wire through it as opposed to breaking your circuit. And what makes this so nice is that you're not actually interfering with your doorbell circuit. All you need to do is figure out how much current, and you don't even care how much, you just care that more current is flowing than is flowing when the doorbell isn't ringing, and you can use that to get a notification or light up a light or trigger a relay. And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to use an ESP32, which is a little bit overkill for the first step of the project because you don't really need that much horsepower, but this project isn't going to end here. We're not only going to figure out if someone's at the front door, we're going to find some creative ways to let people know if we still want them to be at the front door and maybe even some other kinds of automation. So we will be using some of the features that are built into the ESP32 and that the ESP32 can handle. And all you have to do with this is you hook one side to ground and the other side to a pin. I'm using pin 34. Uh, you want to use one of the pins that is usable for analog. Uh, and then I, I've got my circuit powered down. And again, don't forget when you're messing around with this transformer and, and these things tend to be located either at the breaker box or in a closet or sometimes by the doorbell itself, but that is AC, that is mains voltage. And so you want to be careful, but I'm going to slip that connector right through. I've got power down. I'm going to slip that through here and little tight, but we're going to get her in there. So I have a very simple sketch on the ESP32 that is just looking to see how much current is flowing. Uh, what I figured out in my testing is that when I do an analog read on the doorbell, when nothing is going on, I'm getting between 0 and 7 on my analog read. And so what I decided was that 50 was a good safe number because whenever the doorbell is rung, it generally goes over 200 uh, at least. So we have a nice, nice cutoff there that I can use to detect if the doorbell has rung. And when I hit the button, you see on the screen it says ding dong. I put a little bit of code in there to debounce so that a person can't push the button over and over and over again with uh, and keep sending out messages, but every couple of seconds you can send a new doorbell message and great, so we have the actual signal. So now that we have the ESP32 working and detecting if the doorbell has rung, you can basically be off to the races. You can send notifications, you can turn on lights, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to in my situation, I'm going to play an MP3 on my computer and send a notification to my phone. I'll demonstrate that. I'll give you the code for doing that. But um, really, this is just the basis of what we're going to do in future videos. I'm going to show you my code and my flow in Node-RED in just a second. But as always, you can go to my GitHub, another maker GitHub, and there I have a list of all my projects. And this one is called the Smart Doorbell. And you'll see that I have... Uh, code for this if you want to run it on an Arduino Mega or an ESP32 should be really similar to have an ESP8266. Uh, the Node Red flow is right here, so you can actually copy my Node Red code. And then here I have the sketch, and then I have this more advanced sketch that allows you to interact with Node Red and MQTT using your ESP32 and that current sensor. My flow is pretty basic. I am looking for an input on the topic of doorbell. And when that happens, right now we only have one thing that's being parsed, and it is the uh, just looking for the term ding dong. And when it finds ding dong, in this case, for this example, I'm delaying by five seconds. And the reason for that is that I want the sound to go away from the actual ding dong on the doorbell uh, before you hear my computer sound. And then I'm also sending a notification to push over. 
I haven't really talked about pushover on this channel, but I will do a video explaining how to send push notifications to your phone. So what I'm going to do is go over there and push the doorbell and you should see that you'll see the little delay happening here for five seconds and the uh, HTTP request will happen to make the doorbell sound on the computer and pushover will fire off to send a notification to my phone. So you can see my computer made that splat sound and I got a pushover notification saying ding dong and we have essentially turned a dumb old wired doorbell and made it smarter. But that is just the beginning. So subscribe, hit that bell and check back here because next time we're going to learn how to make a wired doorbell evil. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.